Hello everyone, this is Purus Material 101 via MATLAB session 2. I'm Arash and uh, here we want to talk more about visualization of Purus Material images. So in the last session, uh, we have visualized some Purus Material images with different formats in 2D sections. And uh, something like this, that I have the code I have here like this. And you can see different slices of this Purus Material showing as some sort of animation here but this is not exactly what we wanted to do we wanted to visualize it in actual three dimensions so i'm just gonna to comment out this section and then i wanted to load this matrix i have in my here in my directory and s is the size of this matrix and it's an array with three different elements sorry three the same elements and I wanted to visualize this array in actual three dimensions so one easy trick to do that is using ESO surface command in MATLAB which is something like this but if you simply use ESO surface and an array there would be some sort of problem so I'm gonna to talk about some tricks how to do it way more better so like this right now in order to save some time and avoid some sort of difficulties I'm going to make this matrix even smaller so I will select only 100 cube elements of this array to visualize so if we simply do this let's see what happens so this is the image that we have this is this is the pore space that we have there the problem is that this pore space uh, it, it looks a bit strange because it's only a surface it only shows the surface of the structure it's because it's iso surface so uh, here, in order to improve that image, we need to do some sort of tricks. First of all, let's use this axis tickle and tight command to see if it will improve the image quality. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, it is much more better because we have the same aspect ratio as the reality. This is good, but it's not the best. So we wanted to also be able to visualize the solid space which is here and we cannot see there and if we simply inverse these values by 1 minus a you won't get the thing that you wanted it will still give you this image because it just understands the surfaces so the trick that we're gonna do is to make another array which uh, we name it B, which is equal, uh, which is a bit larger than A. So we use it as B is equal to ones of what size? It's S, which is size of matrix A, but plus two. So it's larger by one voxel in each of the dimensions. So as you can see here, B is uh, 202 and so on so sorry I just need to put this S command after resizing A so it will come with the correct sizing okay so if you run this you will see that B the size of B is 102 cube okay so let's do this and uh, this is b and then we wanted this b to be like this we wanted b elements from 2 to n minus 1 and the same for other directions to be equal to a so simple so if now if we visualize B. let's see what happens 
okay? This is much more better because we have a cap at the end of the open pores, as you can see here, which gives us a better understanding of the 3D structure, as you can see here, okay? This cap here is closing the end of the pores. So simply, if we wanted to visualize the solid space, we can easily do this. A, let's do it right here. A is equal to one minus A. So let me get rid of this empty lines to make the code more clear for you. So if we run this, we have this nice image of solid space of the porous material. So this is one way to visualize it. It's in 3D and it gives you a better understanding. But sometimes we just wanted to visualize the surface of this image and not the inside of it, because right now it's also visualizing the inside of it. If we just wanted to make a slices at the surface of this image, which is a suitable method for probably very large images, I would recommend to do this. It's a bit tricky, but it works to try. So uh, I will comment out the sections. Okay, and here we have loaded the A matrix and we have cropped a part of it. So we wanted to visualize only the surface of it. This is how we're going to do it. S is equal to size of A. And then mm, we're going to open a new figure. And then we want to use a command known as mesh grid to make these different elements on each of the surfaces of the image. So using mesh grid, we're going to say make this mesh starting from one to the first element of sorry there are too many brackets parentheses s1 okay and then the same thing for the second dimension and for the third dimension as you can see here this would be a mesh. We are going to construct our images on this mesh. And then we want some slices to be visualized for us. For the X dimension, we want the first and end slices. And let me copy and paste this command and change it to y and then z and then the second and third element of s so at the next step we're going to use this command in matlab is a slice and we say this is the mesh that we had and then this is the matrix which you need to read the values from that matrix and then these are the slices that we have x slice y and z okay so a very small trick I need to do here is to permute the sizes because the problem is that MATLAB in mesh grid command it will uh, swap some of this axis for some sort of applications but we don't want it to do that so this is a simple trick to get rid of those um, access problems so if we simply run this command let's see what's the problem okay we need to change the format of this a array into double to make it work okay so 
as you can see, this is a representation of our structure, but only it shows a surface of it. Okay, so it would be a good idea if we use this access commands here again to still maintain the aspect ratio. And one other thing is that we probably wanted to get rid of those black meshes we can see there. So in order to do that, we need to do this little trick. And uh, because we have saved this array, uh, this image inside this edge handle. So in order to do that for I equal to one to six, we need to go to H I that edge color and put it as non and end. So yeah, this is it. As we can see, this is the only the outer surface of our image. This is a good trick because if this image has any elements other than ones and zeros, it will simply visualize all those values for you. And yeah, this is it. We have visualized this image in two different ways. And let me show you the both images at the same time. Yeah, this is it. This is the visualization of our course material. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you in the next episode.